Lost Property, Chapter 19. Okay, so in the, at the end of the last chapter, we ended up with um, Michael being found and coming to meet Josh. And this is where he actually sees him the first time in what, two years. Josh, is it you? Michael called as he came towards me. How had I described him to the man from the trawler? Muscular, maybe not doing so well? I was wrong about that, very wrong. Michael was wearing tattered grey stubbies and a singlet in no better condition, but the arms and shoulders and thighs that stuck out of them were toned and suntanned and glistening under a sheen of tropical perspiration. He looked fit enough to jump into the ring with Mike Tyson. As he came closer, I saw fine crow's feet of untanned skin in the creases at the corner of his, corners of his eyes. He'd been out in the sun a lot, no doubt about that. His face was more open than I had ever seen it, inviting a smile or a word of hello. And there was something about his walk that the cheap pair of thongs on his feet couldn't disguise. Okay, so a very, very different view of, of Michael that... Um, that Josh actually had because he considered that he was going to be malnourished, um, involved in drugs, drink, not in a very good way. But out steps someone who looks pretty good. So you can imagine Josh's, um, you know, the way he feels about seeing Michael, he'd be quite surprised. In fact, he'd be quite shocked as to what he is seeing. And I'm just going to actually move ahead a little bit. Um, this is all storytelling about um, the robbery, you know, uh, and about his injuries, and they're going to um, to the to the hospital, and as they're going to the car, Michael goes off to make a phone call, and um, and this leaves you know, his companion to to lead Josh towards the Commodore, and he says to Josh, "You've come up to join Mike, have you? Looking to work on the trawlers too, eh? The trawlers." I looked again at the pair of boats moored one behind the other opposite the cruiser. Are you really his boss? Yep, that's my trawler there, Jeannie Mills, named it after me mother. Mike's been with me for a year now. He learned the ropes real quick. Wouldn't be without him these days. He turned away from admiring his own boat and strode on beside me to the passenger's door. Tell you what, if you can work half as well as your brother, I might consider taking you on one day. I mumbled something about being at school. No one had ever held Michael up as a model for me to emulate before. Okay, so I'm just going to stop here and go back a little bit. Um, the picture that we that Josh actually saw in that suitcase when he first discovered Michael had him standing next to a crate with fishtails. And this is now explains why. He's a, he's a fisherman. That's what he does. Um... And not only that, but he's a very good worker. Now, Josh remembers Michael as not being able to hold down a job. The Michael back from the time he remembers him would constantly you know, give up work. So he might work for a few weeks and then quit, work, quit, work. He'd never be able to hold down a job. The apprenticeship, he chucked that it. He didn't want to do that. And yet he has been working in the same job here for a year. And the boss is absolutely so praising. In fact, he actually says, if you can work half as well as your brother, I might consider you taking on one day. So that just shows the absolute respect that the boss has, Trevor has for, for, uh, for Michael. And as he says, no one's, you know, he never held him up as a role model to me before because he was always doing the wrong things. He certainly wasn't a role model, but here... He's the kind of person you do want to emulate. So that just shows that he's been able to do well for himself. Okay, so off they go. They talk about, you know, in fact, mum and dad don't know anything about this. Um, they go to the hospital, wait for the x-rays. And yes, we do find out that um, there are broken ribs. And it's just going to take its time to heal. Um, Michael then decides, that, well, okay, we're going to take you back to, um, to my place. And as they drive in, it's uh, he says, you know, this is what I this is where I live. It's um it's a duplex, so like two units together. This we own this half, and, and a few ladies own the other half. Um, as Michael was helping uh, Josh out of the car, um, I'll just read this last paragraph for you. We are on roughly page one hundred and ninety-two to 
9192. When Michael was helping me out of the car, the front door opened. Sudden movements were not a good idea at the moment, so a few seconds passed before I saw her come out to greet us. From beneath the shady arch of the Bougainvillea, a young woman stared back at me. The narrowness of her face was emphasised by the long straight hair that fell on either side and down her back, but to be honest, that wasn't what caught my attention in those first few moments. Her dress, made of lightweight cotton and almost see-through, stretched down to her ankles, around her shoulders and legs. It was loose-fitting to combat the heat, but in the middle, her stomach pushed outward in a huge bulge that took up every centimetre of space the dress allowed. "'Josh, this is Kelly,' said my brother, once we had mounted three steps to the porch. To the young woman, he said, "'Don't worry, he looks better without a black eye. Had a little accident, but he's fine now.' So he stepped forward, kissed her affectionately on the side of her mouth, a gesture she accepted easily while not taking her eyes off me for a second. So he actually gets to meet Michael's girlfriend. Um, And he notices, very much so, that she's pregnant. So the Michael, this idea that he had of Michael being homeless, drunk, drug addict, malnourished, etc. Every minute here is slowly just being blown apart that whole idea that he had because Michael is a you know a really good worker he's he's got a job he's got a, a house um, he's got a girlfriend and now he's got a baby on the way okay and then they have the discussion about babies and you know and the house and and everything I'll let you read all of that and right down the very end here and this is about a page 193 in your book Kelly led me into the kitchen, held out a chair so that I could sit um, at the laminate's table. I was really struggling to keep hold of my thoughts now, and it wasn't just the painkillers. This was all so different from how I had imagined it would be. I was coming to rescue Michael. I had even seen myself getting him to a doctor if he was doing drugs and not taking care of himself. Well, I had ended up at the hospital all right. But it was Michael who had taken me in a friggin' Holden. And look at Michael. He was doing well for himself. Got a place to live. A job. He's the boss's pin-up boy. And what about Kelly? What about that baby? Okay, so Josh is, yes, I'm sure he's pretty, you know, pretty ecstatic at, at seeing Michael. And the fact that he's able to, re- you know, to reunite with him. However, we are getting very much an image here that... Josh is actually, in one sense, a little bit disappointed because when he left, um, when he left Sydney, when he left to go and find Michael, he actually saw himself, or should we dare say, a, a superhero, the Cape Crusader perhaps. He was on a mission to locate Long Lost Brother and bring him home, reunite the family and, and make everything great again. In, and what actually transpired is as he went up to, to Mackay, Um, he was the one who was in need of help. He's the one who's um, in a very poor state, health-wise, and financially, health-wise, etc. And it's Michael who is rescuing him. So not Josh rescuing Michael, but Michael who is rescuing him. And he has a Holden, just like Dad does. So I guess there's a little bit of disappointment in his face. And that is the end of the chapter.